Who knows how many others there were who might say that their existence consisted of nothing but the most outrageous nonsense. A nonsense that had nothing unique about it at all, and that had nothing behind it or beyond it except more and more nonsense. A new order of nonsense, perhaps an utterly unknown nonsense, but all of it nonsense, and nothing but nonsense. <clears throat> Hi everybody, today is day seven of a Conspiracy Grotesco. I have to think about the name of this event every fucking time I say it. So today, we are reading The Clown Puppet. And this is a super fun story um, that kind of is... The thing about this story that... Um, troubles me, or boggles my mind, I guess I should say, is that the entire time you're reading the story, you're pretty sure the dude who's telling the story is completely insane. And then something happens to make you think, oh shit, I don't think he's insane anymore. Um, but it's just like, it's so fun. It's, um, I wanted to read that line and I forgot to look for it until just right now. Uh, yeah, I'm probably not going to find it. Okay. Um, well, there is some good lines in here, but now we're talking about the clown puppet and we've been talking about puppets in, um, uh, the conspiracy against the human race. So we have this uh, correlation, we'll say. So let me just explain what is going on in the story. Okay, so I'll do this so maybe my, uh, my thumbnail will have a picture of a fucking book in it instead of just my goddamn head. Alright, so there's this dude... And he works at a pharmacy. And Mr. Visniak, who was the pharmacist, lives in the apartment upstairs. And at night, he's like, you know, close up whenever you feel like it. Um, if people are still coming in and you don't mind staying, go ahead and stay. But if um, it gets slow and no one's coming in, you could lock up and whatever. So this guy's working at night, and um, he's about to have one of his visits. And he doesn't know he's going to have one of his visits until the lights inside go from a like light yellow to like a red gold. And then he knows one of the visits is coming. And so he explains all of the nonsense jobs he's had with nonsense people when these visits have taken place. And he doesn't get, like, really into it yet. But he says that it never happens when he thinks it's going to happen. And if he looks this way, the visitor comes this way. If he looks this way, the visitor comes this way. If he looks straight ahead, the visitor could come from either side, just right out of his periphery. And he doesn't even hear anything until the visitor is right in front of him, clattering. And what the visitor is, is like a life-size marionette um, in pale, nasty marionette clothes. And his face is so plain, but sinister. And um, there's just so much evil in it. And this puppet has strings that go up to as far as his eyes could see. But then there's like this murkiness up in the air where the strings go into. 
And every time the puppet comes to him, the puppet will have some request for him. That's a ridiculous nonsense request. And he has tried to fuck with the puppet to see if that does anything. But no matter what he does to fuck with the puppet, the puppet always comes up on top. So, um, in this one, the puppet reaches out and hands him a prescription. And so he opens the prescription thing, because it was all crumpled up. He opens it up, and it's just, like, scribbles. And he's like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with this now? You know, like... (sighs) And, um, he's like, well... If I'm going to fill this, I'm going to have to see some proper identification. (laughs) And, um, the, um, puppet, I I guess I'm, I'm like going into spoiler territory now, but the puppet pulls out, um, I already forgot his name again, Visniak. He pulls out Visniak's passport and he's like, oh. Okay, so now what do I do? And um, an event happens that makes it to where he doesn't have to really do much of anything. Um, but I don't really know like how much more to go into this other than um, this is like pure fucking Ligotti. Like, you have something that is very strange, but happens in very mundane circumstances. And the narrator, instead of, like, having feelings you would expect normal people to have, is just so annoyed at the nonsensical nature of all of it. And, um, it's just so him. Like, Everything you read by Ligotti has this feel to it. And it's just so refreshing. And um, I don't want to say what happens, I guess. Yeah, read the fucking clown puppet. Um, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ruin it for you guys now. So if you're going to read this, go read it. Stop the video now. Let me know down below that you love me and everything. And um, we'll talk about other shit later. Um, Three, two, one. Okay. Now, if you're here, it means you either already have read the story or you're not going to read it, but you want me to spoil it to you because I'm such an amazing storyteller. So, um, his boss, Mr. Visniak, is like banging on the front door, like trying to get him to come let him in. And he goes and he opens the door. And oh, before he did this, the puppet got tired of waiting and just went into the back of the pharmacy to get his own prescription and um Visniak's like yeah I heard something and it like woke me up and and he's like no 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 go to bed everything's fine he's like why are the lights in here red like what's going on and he's like oh nothing you know I think you should just go to bed he's like no I think I'm gonna go to the bathroom in the back Oh, you could go to the bathroom upstairs. No, I'm going to go into the back. So he goes into the back, and our narrator is just standing where he was standing, and he could hear the Mr. Visniak go like, No! No! Get away from me! And um, he was just like, huh. Because he was shocked, just like I was shocked when I read this the first time, that somebody else was able to see this fucking puppet. Like, this wasn't just, like, a hallucination for this guy. Like, this was a legit thing that was happening. And, um... He was, like, saying, like, man, when it's finally my turn to, like, go with the puppet... And at first he was like, so Visniak's gonna see what's, um... pulling those strings, because he heard... Visniak like go up into the air and through the ceiling or something and he's like so he's gonna see it and when this when my time comes you know I'm not gonna act that surprised but um wait how does he say it (laughs) 
Um, when my, when morning finally came, I looked behind the curtain and there was no one there. I told myself, as if for the sake of reassurance, that I would not be so surprised when my time came. No doubt Mr. Visniak had told himself at some point in his life the same utterly nonsensical thing. So he even knows, like, even though he's saying to himself, like, I'm going to not be so puss when this happens to me. He knows that that's bullshit. And when whatever happens that the clown puppet does to yank him out of the ceiling, um, he's probably going to crap his pants, too. So anyway, um, where is that book? Uh, is it down here? Uh, what is this? No, no, no. Oh, oh, here we go. So tomorrow, um, we're going back into the conspiracy against the human race, and we're going to go over the four um, little subchapters, self-hypnosis, cosmophobia, and I'm going to say PES 1 and PES 2, um, and then put uh, ismism at the end of those. Emism. Yeah. Because the first video I did in this subject, I um, used the word esimismpa, and um, my video got flagged So um, for content. So I guess you're not allowed to talk about that or write it in your title. So um, we'll just say PES 1 and 2, okay? So that'll be how that goes. And other than that, um, that's it. If you have any questions or if you like this story or any of the other Teatro Grotesco stories, let me know down below. And, um, oh, there's, there's still four spots left in the Poetic Anarchy class if you guys are interested in that. And I don't have any of my other shit. So that is my sita for today. So I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.